high above our heads, right now, a silent war is happening. It's not fought with soldiers, but with satellites and missiles that move faster than sound. This is the story of Israel's space shield. You might think this sounds like a movie, but it's real. It's a life or death system built to stop missiles before they can even hit the sky. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain and show you exactly how Israel uses the heavens above to protect the people below. You will see how a satellite called Ofek, which means horizon, spots a threat from hundreds of miles away. You will learn how another machine, the Arrow 3, then flies to the edge of space to smash that threat into dust. All of this happens in minutes, sometimes in just seconds. By the end of this, you will understand one of the most clever defense systems ever built. You will see how a small nation uses big technology to keep itself safe. So let's start at the very beginning. Why did Israel need to look to the stars for protection in the first place? For Israel, the problem was simple but terrifying. Its enemies had long-range missiles. A missile fired from far away could reach Israel in just a few minutes. Traditional radar on the ground can only see a missile after it's already in the air and coming towards you. By then, you might only have a minute or two to react. That is not enough time. It's like trying to stop a bullet after you've already heard the gunshot. Israel needed to see the gunman before he pulled the trigger. They needed more warning, and there was only one place to look for that kind of early sight. Up. They had to go to space. If you could have a camera in space, you could watch vast areas of land all the time. You could see a missile the very moment it launches, seeing the hot fire from its engines from hundreds of miles away. That extra few minutes of warning could save thousands of lives. So in the 1980s, Israel decided to build its own eyes in the sky. This was a huge challenge. Very few countries can build and launch their own spy satellites. It takes immense skill and money, but Israel knew it was a matter of survival. They called the satellite program OFEC. The name was perfect. It was about seeing to the horizon, seeing the danger before it could see you. The first OFEC satellite launched in 1988. This was a monumental moment. It meant Israel could now watch over its region by itself without having to rely on other countries for critical information. This was about independence. It was about taking its security into its own hands. Each new OFEC satellite they launched was better than the last. They had sharper cameras. They could stay in space longer. They could send information back to Earth faster. These satellites became the first and most important piece of the shield. They were the lookout on the castle wall, staring out into the distance. Now, let's talk about what these satellites actually do. Imagine a team of silent guardians constantly circling the planet. The OFEX satellites do exactly that. They fly in what's called a low orbit, going around the Earth again and again. Their job is to watch non-stop. They take incredibly detailed pictures day and night. They can even see through clouds and bad weather. But here's the really smart part. These satellites are nimble. They aren't just floating on a fixed path. They can be commanded to shift their orbit slightly to turn their cameras and focus on a specific suspicious area. This is like having a security camera that you can instantly point toward any noise you hear. This gives Israel a real-time view of what its potential enemies are doing. Are they moving missiles? Is there activity on a launch pad? The satellite sees it. All this video and picture data is sent down to control centers in Israel. Here, powerful computers scan the information using artificial intelligence. The computers are looking for specific patterns. They are trained to recognize the unique heat signature of a rocket launch, that sudden, massive burst of fire and energy. The moment the computer sees something that looks like a launch, they alert a human operator. The satellite has done its job. It has seen the first sign of danger. It has given the country a precious head start. But seeing the danger is only half the battle. Now you have to stop it. This is where the second part of the system kicks in. This is the fist that strikes back. Its name is the Arrow 3. Think of the Ofex satellite as the eye, and the Arrow 3 as the punch. 
Israel knew that early warning was useless if you couldn't act on it. You needed a way to destroy the incoming missile, and you needed to do it safely, far away from your cities and your people. For a long time, missile defense happened inside the atmosphere. You would wait for the enemy missile to get close and then try to blow it up right above your head. This is what systems like the Iron Dome do, and they are brilliant at it, but it's still dangerous. The blown up pieces of the enemy missile can fall down and cause damage and injuries. Israel wanted a cleaner, safer solution. They asked a simple question. Why wait for the missile to come to us? Why not go out and meet it? The Arrow 3 was the answer. It is not a normal missile. It is a space interceptor. Its mission is to leave the Earth's atmosphere and hunt its target in the cold black vacuum of space. This is a completely different world. There's no air, there's no sound. The rules of flight are totally different. The Aero 3 is built for this environment. It is designed to fly higher and faster than almost any other interceptor in the world. Its job is to hit an enemy ballistic missile in the middle of its flight when it is soaring through space before it begins its final fall back to Earth. This area is called exo-atmospheric, meaning outside the atmosphere. Destroying a missile here is much safer. Any pieces left from the explosion will simply burn up harmlessly when they try to re-enter the atmosphere, like a meteor. They will never reach the ground. Now, here is one of the most amazing things about the Aero 3. It doesn't even have an explosive warhead. You heard that right. It doesn't blow up the enemy missile. It rams into it. It is built for a hit to kill. It uses its incredible speed and precise guidance to simply smash directly into the incoming threat. The force of the impact is so enormous that it completely obliterates the target. It's like hitting a bullet with another bullet. This requires unbelievable accuracy. So how does this entire system work together from start to finish? Let's walk through a real-life scenario step by step. Imagine a tense morning. In a country far from Israel, a group decides to launch a ballistic missile. Step 1. The launch. The enemy missile blasts off from its launch pad. A huge plume of fire and smoke marks its start. Step 2. The eye sees it. High above, an Ofec satellite is passing over. Its sensors immediately detect the intense heat bloom from the rocket engines. In less than a second, it knows something has happened. It starts recording, and crucially, it sends a signal down to Earth. That signal contains the first raw data. I see a large launch. Here are the coordinates. Step 3. The brain processes. This signal races to a secret Israeli command center. Soldiers and computers get the alert. The computers analyze the data at lightning speed. They confirm it is a missile. They calculate its path. Where is it going? How fast is it traveling? Within 30 seconds, they know with high confidence that the missile is headed for Israel. Step 4. The decision. A military commander gives the order, intercept. Step 5. The fist strikes. At a launch site in Israel, a silo opens. An Aero 3 interceptor roars to life, its engine blazing. It screams into the sky, pointing not at the missile, but at a point in space where the computer has predicted the two will meet. Step 6. The chase in space. The Aero 3 rocket leaves the atmosphere behind and enters the silence of space. But it is not alone. The Ofec satellite is still watching. So are ground radars. They are all tracking the enemy missile and they are all talking to the Aero 3, giving it constant updates. The target has shifted slightly left. Adjust your course. The Aero 3 makes tiny, precise bursts from its thrusters to steer itself. Step 8. The Impact. The enemy missile is now a small dot, hurtling forward at thousands of miles per hour. The Aero 3 is another dot, coming straight at it. There is no explosion. There is just a silent, violent collision. The enemy missile is instantly vaporized into a cloud of tiny, harmless fragments. The entire event happens over 60 miles above the Earth. A silent flash of light in the void. Back on the ground, the radar screens show the threat has disappeared. The pieces are falling, burning up in the upper atmosphere like shooting stars. The sky over Israel is safe. 
the entire process, from launch to intercept, may have taken less than five minutes. This is not just one system working. It is part of a bigger, smarter plan called multi-layered defense. Israel knows that no single system is perfect, so they built a layered shield, like a series of nets. The Arrow 3 is the highest, outermost net. It catches the long-range missiles in space. But what if an enemy missile is too short-range for Arrow 3? Or what if somehow one gets through? That's where the other layers come in. The next layer down is called David's Sling. It is designed to shoot down medium-range missiles. It operates inside the atmosphere, but still very high up. The final, most famous layer is the Iron Dome. This system is the last line of defense. It takes on short-range rockets and artillery shells that are already right above Israeli counts. It calculates which rockets are going to hit populated areas and only shoots those down, saving its ammunition. Together, Arrow 3, David Sling, together, Arrow 3, David Sling, and Iron Dome form a complete shield. From the edge of space all the way down to the city streets, there is a layer of protection. And the OFEC satellites are the brains that help power all of them, providing the early data that makes every layer smarter. So, what does all this technology really mean for Israel? The first and biggest advantage is deterrence. If your enemy knows you have a very good chance of shooting their expensive missile out of the sky, they are less likely to launch it in the first place. It makes attacking you seem pointless. This shield doesn't just protect Israel during a war, it helps to prevent the war from even starting. Secondly, it gives Israel technological independence. They are not waiting for another country to give them permission to see a threat. They built this system themselves. This is a huge source of national pride and security. Furthermore, this success has made Israel a world leader in missile defense. Other countries are now interested in this technology. This leads to partnerships, like the one with the United States, which helps fund and improve the Arrow system. It's a cycle of success. Better technology leads to better defense, which leads to more innovation. Of course, keeping the shield strong is a constant battle. The world doesn't stand still. Enemies are developing new missiles that are faster and can change direction in flight. These are called hypersonic missiles, and they're much harder to hit. Israel is already working on the next generation, sometimes called the Arrow 4, to counter these new threats. Space itself is also a dangerous place. Satellites have to deal with radiation and even space junk, old pieces of satellites and rockets flying around that could smash into them. To stay ahead, Israel is always working on the next thing. Better satellites with sharper cameras, better interceptors with smarter brains. They are even looking at using lasers in the future. The story of Israel's space shield is more than a story about machines. It is a story about a nation's will to survive. It is about using human creativity and courage to solve a seemingly impossible problem. They looked at the sky and saw not a limit, but a frontier for safety. They turned the emptiness of space into their strongest wall. This system shows us that the future of defense is not just about bigger bombs or thicker armor. It is about information, speed, and precision. It is about seeing first, thinking faster, and acting with perfect accuracy. It proves that sometimes the best way to defend your home is to reach for the heavens. If you found this real-life technology story fascinating, if you appreciate seeing how innovation can protect human lives, then please support our channel. Give this video a like and subscribe to War Tech Zone. We explore the ideas and inventions that are shaping our world. Thank you for watching.